Hello and welcome to the next episode in this Beginner's Guide to Paramics Discovery series. This is episode 7 and hopefully you've been tracking with us through the first six episodes. If you haven't seen those yet, I would recommend going and having a look on our YouTube channel. So, so far we have constructed a network from scratch using nodes and links. And in the last three episodes, we've looked at three different kinds of junctions, a priority, a signal controlled, and a roundabout. Now today, we're gonna to take an important step forward, which is to actually get some traffic onto our network. I've got the network in front of me, which we've been using so far. And what we need to think about now is how traffic will enter this network and how it will leave the network. And the way that happens in Paramix Discovery is using a zone system. And the zones will represent origins and destinations for the traffic. So each trip in our model will have an origin zone and a destination zone. So the first thing we need to think about is where we place our zones on this network. And typically on a network like this, the zones will be placed around the edges. So at these uh, points here, uh, where the network comes to the edge, is where our zones will be placed. And traffic will be loaded on in those locations and also taken off the network in those locations as well. So let's zoom in down here and we'll create our first zone in this model. Now to create a zone, I go to my toolbar and click on this button, which is called Add a Zone. And then when I hover in the workspace, I get a crosshair. By left clicking, it begins a, a rectangular shape and I can drag that and click again to complete my zone. So when I create my zone, it will be a rectangular shape, but I can change the shape of the zone quite easily. So to do that, I would go to my Select Objects uh, toolbar button and I can click in the corner and drag my corners around like this. And I can also add extra points on the shape uh, by clicking on the dashed squares uh, which appear. So it's easy to create a, make a zone any shape that you wish. You can also move a zone as a whole by clicking in uh, the zone and selecting the square which appears in the, in the center of the zone and you can see that I can move the whole thing in one go. Now the next thing that we need to think about is how zones connect with the network itself and essentially with the links on the network. So there's a very important relationship between zones and links. And that relationship is that zones need to be placed over the midpoint of links for traffic to be loaded onto the network. Now at the moment, the link on the edge of our network here is quite long. And it's really not suitable to place the zone over the midpoint of this link because we'd have to place the zone somewhere around here. So what we're going to do instead is add a shorter link at the edge of the network. So I'm going to click on my link uh, button and hover over node two and then click in the workspace. And that creates my two nodes and a link within zone one. Now when I go back to my Select Objects tool and click on Zone 1, you'll see that the colours of the two sides of the link here are uh, showing. Purple represents a link where traffic will be loaded onto the network and green representing where traffic will be taken off the network. So we've created Zone 1 and now we're going to create all the other zones around the edge of our network. So the first thing I'm going to do is to add in a series of short links. So going back to my link toolbar button, I'm going to add in some short links around the edges, like so. And then I'm going to go around adding in my zones. So this will be zone two, zone three. And you can see that as I place the zones over my links, I'm making sure that they cover the midpoint of the link. 
I tend to make sure that they cover pretty much the whole link, uh, just to be absolutely certain. And each time the zone is placed over the link on the edge of the network, we can check that it's going to load traffic and receive traffic by seeing the purple and the green colors. So now as I zoom out, I can see I've got seven zones around the edge of my network. With my zone system in place, it's now time to think about the actual traffic itself and how many trips are going to leave each origin and arrive in each destination. And we do that in the next tab along called Edit Demand. So I'm going to click on that. Now, because we have created seven zones in our model, I've automatically got a seven by seven matrix in uh, the Edit Demand tab. And you can see by default, uh, this is populated with zeros. Now we can simply click on these cells and type numbers into them. These numbers would be representing the number of trips going between a particular origin and destination in one hour. But it's unlikely when you're developing a demand matrix that you're going to type in the value into every cell. It's much more likely that you will develop uh, this matrix in a spreadsheet and then import that into Pramix Discovery. So if I just close my model down for a moment and open up this folder, in here I've got a CSV file which contains some traffic demands for this model. So we can see that I've got seven origin zones and seven destination zones represented and these are the trips that are going to be uh, released onto my network. Now this is a very uh, basic uh, structure of a demands file. It does get more uh, complex as you add in more layers into your model, but this is a good starting point. So let me close that down and I'm going to go back to my model. And if I go to edit, import, demands, and double click on that CSV file. It's checking the format of the file to ensure that that's correct. And then click on import demands and it loads those in. Now the traffic demand that we've loaded into this model is based on a time period of 60 minutes. So the traffic going from zone two to zone one, for example, will be 53 trips over 60 minutes. You might also notice in here, there's a vehicle type proportions tab and in there, it's telling us that our traffic demand is split up by different vehicle types. So we've got five different vehicle types and they've each got their own proportions. So you can see that cars have the majority of the traffic demand as you would expect. Now you can edit these of course, um, but there's just a, a useful set of defaults there to get started with. So we've got our traffic demand, we've got our vehicle type proportions. Let's have a look at that traffic on the network. And we do that in the Visualize tab. Now, when I click on the Visualize tab, I get another image of the network and I need to click Refresh in the bottom left-hand corner. That pushes through any changes that I've made in the Edit Network and Edit Demands tab. Now, if I click Play, it will start to load traffic onto the network. So it's loading from that zone system that I've created using the traffic demand matrix. And I can zoom in to a particular junction and see the traffic in operation. Now, it's moving very quickly. By default, it's gonna run at its maximum speed. I'm gonna slow that down to five times real time and let the traffic flow. Now you might find when you watch traffic on the network for the first time, the vehicle's doing things that you wouldn't expect. And that's not really a big problem at all. You know, at the moment what we've done is built our road network and we've loaded some traffic demand on. It's very natural that it's not gonna be perfect immediately. And what we'll do in the next episode is go through this network and all of the different junctions, really look at the vehicle behavior, understand what's going on, and iron out some of the issues that we see. So thank you for watching this episode seven of A Beginner's Guide to Pramix Discovery. In this episode, we've learned how to add and edit and move a zone. We've also learned how to create a zone system around 
the edges of our network and how the zones load traffic onto links. We've added a demand matrix into our model and then we've seen that traffic on the network for the first time. So in the next episode, we're going to focus in more detail on the traffic on the network and how we refine the vehicle behavior at the different junctions. So we really look forward to seeing you then. Bye for now.